How's it going, everybody? Thank you for coming out tonight. It is uh, good to be here. It is good to be back. Now that COVID's over, um, you know, it was a weird time for everybody. But as you can imagine, a comedian who spends most of their time on the road, it was a very strange time for me. Uh, I live in Cincinnati, Ohio, and I remember I would... <laughs> um, I remember I would get on social media every day and I'd see my buddies in New York and Los Angeles and uh, they'd be in their one bedroom apartments, literal lockdown. And every day they'd say the same thing. I just want this to be over so comedy can come back and I can see people again. Cause that's what comedy does. It lets us see people, you know, but I'm married with two kids. So I wanted comedy to come back for a completely different reason than they did. <laughs> I was ready to not see people for a little while. And the first club that reached out was actually the club in Cleveland. And they said, hey, we're going to start doing shows again. What do you think about coming up? And I said, it sounds great. I can't wait. I'll see you soon. And they're like, we haven't told you what the dates are. I was like, I don't care when it is. I'll be there. <laughs> and they're like, all right, well, let's talk money. And I said, I'll give you $500 if you just let me spend the night in a hotel by myself. And I tried to do things other comedians did during COVID to keep the rust off. I did stand up at a drive-in, which was awful. Uh, I hated it. Uh, they hated it, you know? I mean, they're trying to watch a movie. But I was like, listen, I have jokes to tell. It's good to be here, man. I know every comic you've ever seen says it's good to be here, but I mean it, okay? This is a good gig. And I know, because I've done terrible gigs, okay? I've done stand-up dressed like an umpire during a minor league baseball game. That is a terrible gig. <laughs> See, I've been doing this 25 years, okay? And six months in, I didn't know there's jobs you're not supposed to take. So when the woman from the Dayton Dragons uh, baseball team came up to me after a show and said, how would you like to play in front of a sold-out stadium? I was like, lady, I've been doing this half a year. Of course I'm ready for it. <laughs> So I drive up to Dayton from my home in Cincinnati, where it was, uh, it was a beautiful night at the ballpark, absolutely packed. They gave me my umpire uniform, which was two sizes too small. Not a good look on me, okay? And I realized that when this guy said, hey, your chest protector's on funny. I was like, I'm not wearing a chest protector. Uh, <laughs> this is a medium. And I started to get nervous, and I asked this guy, I go, hey, man, what happens when I think this goes as bad as as it's about to, and he goes, look, I was a linebacker for the New York Jets in the National Football League for seven years. I know what fear is. This is nothing. You're going to go out there. You're going to have a good time. If anything goes wrong, I'll come out and save you. Those people love me. I'm the one who throws them free T-shirts when I run around with the mascot. I was like, all right, thank you. I appreciate that. So it's the fourth inning. I'm supposed to go out there at the end of the inning. Well, in the bottom of the fourth, there's a close play at home plate, and the umpire makes a horrible call and gets into an argument with the Dragons star player at the time, Willie Mo Pena, and proceeds to throw him out of the game. Then the Dragons manager goes out to argue, and he gets tossed. Now we have 10,000 people booing the man I'm going to pretend to be in about 30 seconds <laughs> to try to get some laughs. The guy was like, hey man, you wanna wait a couple innings? I was like, I'd, I'd like to wait a couple games, if that's okay. <laughs> He's like, look man, if you don't go out there, we can't pay you. I was like, all right, let's just wait a couple innings. So fast forward to now, I'm gonna try it again, okay? The inning ends, the umpire walks down into the dugout, I put the mask on, they make the announcement, tonight's umpire is also a stand-up comedian and he's gonna do his act for you. I step out onto the field, boo, boo. I get to home plate, I start doing my material, okay? And they hate it, but by the end of the material, I feel like they're listening. They're not laughing, but they've stopped booing. And now I have to decide, do I want to finish with some dignity or just fly this plane straight into the mountain? <laughs> so I had been making fun of people who go to the flea market, okay? And I say, are there any NASCAR fans here tonight? Yeah. I would be like, NASCAR is huge at the flea market. Ooh! <laughs> Hot dogs, pretzels, anything you can throw is just hitting me from every direction as I stand there smiling behind the mask because I can't fully explain it, but there's something exhilarating about feeling pure, unfiltered hatred from that many people at one time. 
But also, this has not gone well, right? This has not gone the way it was supposed to, and I don't know how I'm supposed to finish when I see that guy jog out of the dugout and start jogging towards home plate. And I'm like, oh, great. He's going to come tell everybody what happened. And uh, he doesn't slow down. In fact, he picks up speed, and he just spears me. I mean, just <laughs> levels me. Now I'm laying on home plate, looking up at the sky. I'm not quite sure what's happened. Pretty sure I've sustained a spinal injury, and 10,000 people could not be happier about it, right? They are <laughs> losing their minds while this guy just parades around my lifeless body, soaking it in, right? So then he picks me up like I'm nothing, like a rag doll, just tosses me over his shoulder. Then he grabs the mic up off the ground. He's like, Dragon fans, I'll take out the trash tonight. <laughs> so I'm flopped over his shoulder as he's carrying me to the dugout. Wind completely knocked out of my system. So right in his ear, I'm going. <laughs> we get back underground. He's like, that was crazy. I was like, that's insane. What just happened? He goes, were you crying out there? I was like, crying? No, I wasn't crying. I didn't think I was going to breathe ever again. I can't believe I did this for $35. <laughs> so yeah, it's good to be here. Listen. I just like having my own thing to do during the day. I like to do whatever I want. And I get that when I'm on the road. I don't get that when I'm at home. If it's a family trip, I have no say whatsoever. Not long ago, we went to Amish country. I don't know if anybody's ever been to Amish country, but that place sucks. It is terrible. Uh, not fun. At, you know what I didn't like? I'll tell you what I didn't like, the people. I didn't like the people. I, uh, I found them to be very hypocritical, you know? Because they're like, we don't believe in electricity, but we'll use it if we need to run your Visa card. And I don't like that attitude. And I told him, I said, go big or go home, Ezekiel. Don't plug up, dude. It's a slippery slope. And he didn't like me, you know, probably because his name wasn't Ezekiel, and I kept trying to guess what it was. I was like, Abraham. No. Jebediah? No. All right, I'll stop. The only reason I agreed to go in the first place was if I was allowed to take pictures and document the whole trip on social media. And the first time I took a picture, I get scolded by this Amish guy. He's like, sir, we would appreciate if you're going to take pictures, you didn't take them of us. And I said, why is that? He goes, pictures give people a sense of pride. We don't like to do things that make us feel proud. I'm like, you're charging three grand for a kitchen table without any chairs to go with it. I'm pretty sure you're proud of that table, all right? Why don't you worry about filling in that mustache? Because you look silly. I don't care how good your pretzels are. I'm never coming back here again. Are you kidding me? Not proud? Really? Why don't you tell me for the fifth time how you put that barn up in one day? Okay, I don't need this. I left a scathing Yelp review. I never heard back from a manager. <laughs> Last year for spring break, we did Gatlinburg, Tennessee. Been to Gatlinburg? If you've never been, let me tell you about it. All right? Gatlinburg is an American Indian word. It means land of the couples that wear matching airbrush t-shirts. I don't know if that's accurate, but it's accurate. And they always pick the same design, too. This is what it looks like. It's a silhouette of a much skinnier couple than the people who are wearing the t-shirts. And on the shirt, this couple, they're holding hands. They're in love, you guys. Their feet are in the sand. They're under a palm tree. There's a rainbow sunset on what is clearly the ocean in the background. Then they just write Gatlinburg across the top so that you know which of the islands in the Smoky Mountains that they visited, right? They're just, they're not smart people. But it's great for people watching. If you like to people watch, this is, this is your spot, okay? I don't know if you enjoy it or not, but man, there's no better hobby. It's free. You know, you just sit there with someone you love and Talk about the trash walking by for a couple hours, right? <laughs> Gallenberg is prime pickings. I mean, there's not that much white trash in a dumpster behind a paper plate factory. Do you know what I'm saying? Like, it's special. I love people watching so much, I take pictures when I do it and trade them with my friends like they're baseball cards. Now, if you're into something like that, let me just give you a tip. Make sure that the flash and the sound on your phone are turned off, which I know sounds like a no-brainer. Guys, I've been doing this a long time. I messed up bad. I'm in line for security at the airport. I'm going this way, coming at me. He's a gentleman, 
Hawaiian shirt, shaved face, but out of the top of his shirt was this perm, I don't know the right, a, a tuft. It was the brightest, whitest, bushiest chest hair I've ever seen in my life. And I've been to Sarasota. This was next level, dude. It was teased, possibly bleached. He looked like a Build-A-Bear whose neck had been slit to send a message to the other Build-A-Bears to pick it up, because numbers are down, right? And I knew if I didn't get a picture of him, I wasn't gonna be able to sleep that night. But here's the rub. I couldn't do it from this distance and this angle. No one's gonna see how awesome it is. If I want some likes, I gotta time it so that when he's passing by, I can get that side view, you know, the profile. So to do that, I have a face I make. It's very simple. The only, the only thing I'm trying to convey with this face is what? I'm just checking Twitter, even though my phone's kind of pointed in your general direction. <laughs> He stops right here. I hit the button, it's like, flick, flash. I was like, <laughs> there's a Pokemon on your shoulder, sir. Just, <laughs> hold on, we'll get it. So just be careful, okay? The other tip, if you're gonna take pictures while you people watch, is to make sure that you have a full battery, charge up. Because that's what happened to me in Gatlinburg when I went to go people watching. I, uh, I was at my favorite spot to do it there, which is the old fashioned candy kitchen. I love that place, because no matter what time of day you show up, you're gonna see the same thing. There's gonna be a hillbilly pressed up against the window who can't figure out how they're making taffy on the other side of the window. <laughs> and it's the greatest day of their life. They're just like, what? No. -uh. Hey, come look, come look. It's where they make it. The taffy for Cracker Barrel, yes, right here. I don't know how they do it, even though I can see the whole process. This is. I saw her standing there a block away. The Mickey Mantle rookie card of people watching. I got so excited, I was like, oh, I've heard about you. Oh, you are coming home with me. Easy girl, easy girl. I'm not gonna hurt you. close enough to take the picture, press the button, just a dead battery sign. What? No! I scared her, she ran back into Ripley's, believe it or not. <laughs> believe it or not. And I just sat down on the bench right there in between the Pancake Pantry and Fanny Farkle's Arcade. I was so mad, you know? All this time I tracked her. I just let her get away. I wish I could pull up a picture so you could see how awesome she was, but I can't, because I was careless, so. I'll just describe her as best I can. She had early 1990s hair. Remember that look? Pull back tight in a ponytail, but in the front. In today's news. <laughs> that thing, that thing defied all logic and gravity. <laughs> I always wondered how that was formed, you know? Because I, I, I always only ever saw the finished product, and then I showed up too early for homecoming one year. And there she was in front of the big mirror. So that was that lady's hair, okay? She's just like, she was so perfect. She looked like someone that might frequent a Long John Silver's slash Kentucky Fried Chicken. The two in one fast food restaurant. You ever go to one of those places? Another great spot for people watching. I don't know what it is, but the average redneck brain cannot process that there are two businesses operating behind one counter and sharing the menu space above. And the first time they see it, it just catches them off guard. They're like, Okay, could I get a... <laughs> okay, 
what happened here? Am I in a food court? Like, what? I want chicken. I can order from both of them. It's the same company. Oh, I didn't. Okay. Wow. Okay, well, I'm getting a family meal deal. I get two sides. Could I get a side from this side and then a side from that side? I can? Okay. Well, extra biscuits. I knew that before I came in here. And um, what does Long John Silver's have? Hush puppies. Ooh, can I do that? Two breads? I can? Oh, yeah. Let's go there. And I was wondering, like, what, what is the big thing here, you know? Because I know that you think I'm joking just for the sake of doing comedy. I'm not, okay? Sit by, sit by the register in one of these two-in-one fast food spots. Ten minutes tops, you'll hear a sentence that has never been formed in the history of words. <laughs> it's because there's too many options, and people aren't prepared, and they get up there, and then a line forms behind them, and they get nervous, and they're like, oh, um... Do green beans go with tacos? Like, I don't even know what I'm looking at. <laughs> it's the best. It really is the best. If you're gonna do it, and I recommend you do it, just make sure half of wherever you go is Long John Silver's, because that is the place that brings them out, okay? <laughs> at any Long John Silver's, you will hear a grown man ask for extra crumbs, which I feel is just a new low for our society. <laughs> If you don't know what I'm talking about, Long John Silver's is a fast food seafood restaurant. And what they do is they take chicken and fish and they dip it in a batter and then they put it in the fryer. And when they flip it out of the fryer, little pieces of that batter break off. And then a pile of all those little pieces form. And then people go, hey man, can I get a scoop of the stuff that thing's been laying on? Can I, can I put some of that in my treasure chest? And when I heard it, I was like, did that guy just ask for more crumbs? She pushes a button on the register. Boop, crumbs, 10 cents. I was like, you gotta be kidding me. What? How often does this happen? I mean, I thought I could be witnessing the first time in the history of Long John Silver's where some guy's like, I'm so embarrassed to tell you this, but I'm a little short on cash. I got a long drive ahead of me. I'm, I'm so hungry. Could you just, I don't know, put some of that stuff into a cup? I could snack on it. No. No, it happens so much, it has been programmed into the register. <laughs> Think about that. If whatever you want to call that stuff has its own button, which I'm pretty sure we'll all agree was not in their original business plan, <laughs> that tells me there was a day that something happened. At some Long John Silver somewhere, something happened to bring us to where we are. And as a people watcher, I'm just sad I wasn't there to see it. Because I pictured it in my head a thousand times, right? Some toothless manager just comes storming out of the back. Hey, somebody's gonna have to start paying for these crunchies, all right? I can't be giving this stuff away. I mean, if everybody's gonna ask for it, we gotta figure something out, all right? I don't know how to make it. It's an accident. Y'all just love free stuff. That's why we got rid of tartar sauce pumps and switched to packets. Two per customer. Y'all were just pumping it right into your boats. Nobody needs that much tartar sauce. Nobody. I'm sick of it. And he tries to slam that door, but it's that metal kitchen door, right? Now you can just hear him in the back. I ain't selling down, Ricky. I'm sick of this. They don't pay me to put up with it. I'm so mad my hand's shaking. I'm supposed to bowl tonight. Now what? I'm done. I said it before, but I mean it this time. I'm done. You watch. As soon as I can afford that lift kit and them Luke Bryan tickets, you ain't never going to see me again. I'm out. <laughs> well, of course I'm going. Florida Georgia Line's opening. I ain't going to miss that show. <laughs> They're the only two dudes that even settle me down right now. <laughs> you do that? All right. Well, then you take the Nelly part. <laughs> you make me want to roll my window. <laughs> Look. You're kind, you're very kind. All we just learned is that I've thought way too much about an incident at a Long John Silver's that probably never happened. It's just, I'm obsessed. I just have so many questions about that company. I do. I think it's run by potheads, I'll say it. I think that's how they come up with their ideas. They get together, they get baked, they're like, Carl, what do you got? He's like, Pfft. there have been several occasions where I was like, I want fried chicken and pizza at the same time. 
but I was not capable of driving to two different places. <laughs> That's a great idea, Carl. We could put both of them in here, two and one, cut the rent in half, I love it. Yes, Ricky, I've always wanted to make taco shells out of Doritos. That's what I'm talking about. That might be the best idea to ever come out of one of these summits. Taco Bell is amazing. You guys like Taco Bell? Yeah, that's, that's a very polarizing restaurant. No one's ever on the fence about Taco Bell. You just say it and people are like, absolutely, or hard pass, which is a constipation joke, but also a firm no. I respect Taco Bell, because they know what I just said. They know if you're gonna eat there, you're gonna eat there. You ever seen a commercial for Taco Bell? Never makes sense, doesn't have to. Doesn't affect the bottom line. They'll put out a product that has the exact same ingredients as six other products on their current menu. They just change the name or shape of it and try to make you feel dumb when you call them out on it. They're like, you've never had this. This is seasoned steak lettuce, cheese, tomatoes, and sour cream encased in a flour tortilla. How does that sound? I mean, it sounds like a steak burrito. Well, it's not. One more time for the new guy. All right, steak burrito, see it right here? It's rolled up, big deal. This, guys, what we did here is we fold in the sides and we press it with a t-shirt iron. What is so hard to understand about the technology we've invested to make crunch wraps. That's it. They make up food names. Like, those things don't exist. There's no such thing as a crunch wrap. Their dessert menu's a joke. They just take other desserts you've heard of and change it a little bit. They're like, we're the only ones that have Cinnabon bites. Isn't that just a cut up Cinnabon? I mean, yeah, but we cut it up for you, okay? You could say gracias. My bad. Is, it a, is there like a cool container you're gonna serve them to me in? No, man, it's just a drink cup. But we gave it a Slurpee lid so you could cut your fingers trying to get the ones off the bottom. So, de nada. I remember several years ago, the hostess company went bankrupt, and then a month later, an unknown entity saved them from bankruptcy. I thought for sure it was Taco Bell. I was, I was waiting on that commercial forever, right? It's the Twinkie Burrito. We have stuffed a Twinkie full of taco meat. Some people are like, ooh. Potheads are like, absolutely. Sir, would you like Twinkie cream or sour cream? I don't care if it's coffee cream. I would just like my Twinkie Burrito, some fire sauce, two ho-ho lupas <laughs> and a Mountain Dew. I would like the Baja. <laughs> Guys, we got an obesity problem in this country. And I know you're like, is this dude about to make fun of fat people while using his stomach as an armrest? And the answer is yes. <laughs> it's not that funny, lady. All right, just relax. <laughs> Thought I could fool you with a track jacket. <laughs> they sell these to anybody. You don't even have to be a runner. <laughs> my weight's gone up and down my whole life, and I blame the Book It program. <laughs> if you don't know what the Book It program is, when I was in elementary school, Pizza Hut decided oh, yeah. that the best way to solve the illiteracy problem was to offer children a free personal pan pizza if they read four books, or told their teacher that they read four books. <laughs> and, I mean, it was awesome when you were a kid, right? You got pizza for doing homework, but 30 years later, nobody's making you read books and you're hooked on pizza. That's kind of what I'm going through right now. <laughs> I knew I had to drop some weight because I reached a point where I thought people were talking about my weight all the time, whether they were or not, that's just where my head was. Like when the Delta flight attendant asked me to switch seats to balance out a Canadair regional jet. That'll ruin your day real quick, okay? Because if I think about it, it's not me. It's where I'm sitting versus where there's too many empty seats. But if you're self-conscious about your weight, that's not what you hear. What you hear is, sir, 
if you move 10 feet that way, the whole plane will fly properly. Could you help us out? Could you help us out? And if you have to use the restroom, please ring your call button so we can send two people to your seat. Okay, I don't wanna, I don't wanna turn this thing into a space shuttle. We're just, we're just trying to get to Florida. I don't know. It's, I rationalize too much, right? I think, you know what? Everybody loves food. Why, is, what, why do I have to change? And it's true, everybody does love food. Bath and Body Works was selling a candle that smells like mashed potatoes. How fat are you, okay? <laughs> When you want your bedroom to smell <laughs> like buttered mashed potatoes. This fat, turns out, I got the gravy one too. It smelled amazing. It was, it was a great deal. It was buy one, get one. And I got a free bottle of fried chicken body wash because I opened up a credit card to pay for it. Like, it was a good deal. Number one show on TV six years in a row was Man Versus Food. Yeah, they're doing it again. They got a new guy because the first one exploded or whatever. <laughs> we don't need to do that show again. I learned everything I was supposed to learn the first time around. I watched that show as if it were a documentary meant to show America what will happen to your body if you eat unhealthy every day for six years. If you watch it like that, it works. You could leave here tonight. Go to YouTube. Do a search for man versus food. Watch a clip from season one, then immediately watch a clip from season six. You'll notice the difference right away. That guy was way skinnier when he started, and he had an amazing vocabulary. Where'd that go? <laughs> watch season one, he's very articulate. He's like, folks, there is a symphony of flavor going on in my mouth right now. When I bit down, I got heat from the peppers, I got sweet from the relish, little salt from the bacon. This place, they've done it, I'll tell you. They have made perfect harmony in the form of a sandwich. And then six years later, he's like. This is yummy. This is really good. It's too easy to eat terrible everywhere and I fall for it I see some gimmick food they're like this is the most calories ever and I'm like I gotta try that <laughs> Wendy's has a sandwich called son of baconator their food is making babies when they're closed to sell the next day <laughs> little sandwich children <laughs> Golden Corral that place is still a thing you ever go to Golden Corral you can go once can't go twice. Because when you go that first time, you learn there are no rules. There is no code of conduct. That's why it's called Golden Corral. It's just like the old west of eating. I was like, maybe this was a bad idea. We tried to leave. The guy's like, sir, is there a problem? Look, man, I appreciate you giving me access to a chocolate fondue fountain for $9. The problem is I just watched the guy walk by with his prime rib. I was like, hey man, that's not gravy. I know. <laughs> what is that you got? Whipped cream on corn on the cob, it's called cream corn. <laughs> mm. <laughs> but I've needed, I've needed to lose weight for a while and, uh, and I feel like I tried everything, you know, and I would talk about it on stage and then people would yell out how they think I should lose weight, you know? One lady's like, you should go vegan. And uh, I don't know if there's any vegans in here with enough strength to raise your hand, but. <laughs> Look, if you can do it, good for you, okay? I, can, I can't do it. I've only had one vegan experience. It did not go well. I was in Jacksonville and I was walking down the street and I passed a bakery with all these beautiful things in the window. So I just kind of poked my head and I go, excuse me, ma'am, what, what's that right there? on the bottom. And she goes, that's a root beer float donut. And we just took it out of the oven about a half hour ago. Do you want one? I was like, no, I want two. But only put one in the bag because the other one ain't making it out of this store. So she hands me the one over the counter. I take a bite as we walk to the register and I was like. <laughs> oh. <laughs> She's like, are you okay? I was like, I think you made this wrong. 
She goes, no, I didn't make it wrong, sir. Are you not aware that you're in a vegan bakery? I was like, I don't even know what that means. <laughs> and so she points to this sign behind the counter and it says, no product contains an ingredient that comes from an animal. And I was like, well, that's ironic because this is some bullshit. <laughs> no, no, I didn't say it, but I should have said it because she deserved to hear it. And she did deserve to hear it. She should have known when I came through that door, I was in the wrong place. Look at me. Look at me! <laughs> I guarantee I don't look like any of her regulars, okay? <laughs> and I would have had a lot more respect for her if she would have been like, sir, I think you might want the place down the street. <laughs> yeah. Don't worry, it happens all the time. They'll have everything you're looking for. Milk, eggs, butter, taste. Right down the street. <laughs> it's like four blocks. I'm sure you'll call an Uber. You can wait inside. It's I do feel like I've tried everything though. Tried P90X, 90 day workout plan. I made it 15 minutes, about 15 minutes. It was hard. <laughs> Nobody on those DVDs looked like me. Much like the vegan bakery, that should have been my clue. I'm in the wrong place, right? Everybody on there is yelling at me like they know me. Keep going. Love that pain. Enjoy the burn. Why don't you shut up, dude? <laughs> It's easy for you to say, you look like you've been doing this your whole life. Why not put on one guy that looks like me off to the side so that I have a basis of comparison to how things should be going on my end, you know? I'd like to see if he's also laying on the ground about to pass out before the warm-up's over. I'd like to know that. I might check out disc two just to see what happened to that guy. They'd be like, well, we lost Kevin yesterday, but we're glad that you're back for leg day. And I'm sure some of you are like, Josh, I don't know you that well, but my guess is you went into it with a bad attitude. No, I didn't. I went into it with a great attitude. I expedited the shipping. I upgraded to the multicolored resistance bands. I was dressed and ready to go the day I knew it was on the truck for delivery. I put that thing in and within seconds regretted every decision I had ever made in my entire life that led me up to that moment. And the thing is, I didn't go out looking for it either, you know? I was just at home one night, watching TV, minding my own business. When this guy comes on, he's like, hey man, you want a six pack? Yeah. <laughs> you want it in three months? I mean, the sooner the better, I guess. <laughs> well, call me. So I called him. It was so bad. And here's the other thing that bothers me. At that time, when I started it, my health level was right here, okay? And all I wanted P90X to do was get me from here to here, right? Just a little bump. I was so bad, I didn't want to do anything. I just sat around watching Netflix, eating Oreos. <laughs> Every kind of Oreo that came out, you know, they do like the special flavor Oreos. I wanted to try all of them so I could give them an honest review. And decent. I even put a fake IP address on my computer so that I could order Oreos from other countries. <laughs> I did, I tried Swedish fish Oreos. Yeah, they're terrible, but it was better than doing CrossFit. And then by the time I snapped out, I found myself here. I was like, this is messed up, dude. I'm fatter because I tried P90X. And that's how I went with everything. If I didn't get immediate results, I would just sit around and get fatter, sad that it didn't work. Gym memberships, exercise equipment, diets. I tried every kind of diet people told me about. Even if it sounded made up, I was like, maybe it'll work for me. I tried this Minecraft diet. Yeah, it's just three square meals a day. Uh, listen. Great job. It's a great job. Thank you. Thank you, manager of GameStop. Those are the only people that like that joke. All the grandparents are like, well, I'll tell it to my grandkid. Maybe they'll enjoy it. I don't know. I didn't like the order the P90X went in. They start with arms. Disc one, arms. I need my arms to do stuff tomorrow. The next day I couldn't get either arm higher than where this is. Do we all see that? That's how high both of my arms would go. To brush my teeth that morning, I had to brace against the door frame of the bathroom, lower my head down, and then just move it around on the toothbrush. Because my arms wouldn't work. Am 
My wife is, uh, she's been very supportive of me through my comedy career, which I appreciate. She understands that, you know, I'm in a, I'm in a line of work and I've been in it for so long that my brain is trained to come up with a joke in any situation, no matter how inappropriate a joke might be in that situation. I can't turn it off. I remember the day we found out she was pregnant with our first child. She took the test and she passed or whatever. And, uh... <laughs> And she's like, I'm not going to get excited until I hear it from the doctor himself. So we go to the doctor, and he comes in. He's like, yeah, you guys are pregnant. Congratulations. And I said, what's the due date? He said, well, if the date you gave me is correct, I'm going to guess July 4th. And I was like, 4th of July, that'd be ironic. He goes, why is that? I go, I mean, the day that America is celebrating the birth of its freedom, I can mourn the death of mine. <laughs> and it's a great joke. I stand by it. And listen, at some point, I probably should have just told him I was a comedian. Because when someone knows that you're a comedian, they let you get away with saying things like that. They don't get weird. They're just like, that's what he does. I could tell by his reaction, he had no idea what I did for a living. And in that moment, I had to decide, do I tell him and make this room more comfortable for everyone that's in it? Or do I challenge myself as a professional and try to replicate this exact same awkward silence over every visit for the next six to eight months. Of course that's what I chose. That's back when she still thought I was funny. That, that goes away. One day I learned a valuable lesson. Just shut up. It's good advice. If I ever meet newlyweds or engaged couples, I always tell the dude, bro, just shut up. You don't know how good this advice is, but it's advice I wish I'd gotten a long time before I had to figure it out on my own. I got terrible advice from my married friends at my reception. And I blame the open bar for that, you know, looking back. I was engaged for a year and a half. They never said a word. Then there was free kettle one for four hours. Now I got 27 Dr. Phil's popping up every five seconds. And my one buddy, I knew it was gonna happen. I told her a week out, I said, listen, he's probably gonna get pretty drunk at our reception. And my only ask of you is if you see him talking to me or even walking my way, you pull me aside or I'll be stuck with him all night. She's like, don't worry about it. So sure enough, he's wasted, okay? We all knew he's wasted. He's break dancing by himself <laughs> on the middle of the dance floor to the soundtrack from Aladdin during appetizers. We all knew. <laughs> So he goes into his backspin on Friend Like Me, finishes. We lock eyes, he gets up, he starts stumbling my way. I try to find her, she's leaving the room. I was like, oh boy, here we go. And I've known this dude since we were three years old. I've never seen him this drunk. I was like, hey man, you having a good time? Are you serious? This is the best wedding I've ever been to. And let me tell you something, I was laying over there and I was like, I've been married for a minute, you know? What kind of best friend would I be if I didn't give my boy advice about marriage on his wedding night? <laughs> so listen, if I was just gonna give you just one really good pee. <laughs> Sorry, sometimes I can feel her walking up behind me. <laughs> it's just, Just, just pick your battles. That's what every one of my married friends told me. They said, pick your battles. They said it like it was a secret. Top level intel. I was finally allowed to hear it. Pulled me aside. They're like, dude, it's so easy. Just pick your battles. It's terrible advice. What does it mean on paper? It means if I only argue my side every once in a while, I get to win that time. No, you don't. You never get to win. There'll be times you think you've won. She might even say, fine, you win. You have no idea how bad you've lost at this point. <laughs> I don't like the word battles. I don't think that's accurate. Very dramatic. 90% of the things you argue about when you first get married are so dumb. She came up to me one time. Come here, you got a peeper. What? You have a peeper. What's a peeper? 
Josh, the white stuff in your eye when you wake up in the morning. Peeper. That's the dumbest thing I've ever heard in my life. She's like, why, what do you call it? I was like, sleep? That doesn't make sense. Yeah, it does, that's what it's called. So what's that, like one side? Or it's both, Jennifer, you have a piece of sleep in your eye or you have some sleep in your eyes. It's the same word, singular and plural, like deer or fish, right? So we're going back and forth, knowing neither one of us is using the medical term for whatever that stuff is when you wake up in the morning. But my idiot friends are in the back of my head going, dude, you're about to decide what that's called in this house for the rest of your life. You might want to see this one through the end. So I was like, all right, battle pick. Let's dance. This is it. This is the one. I picked this one. I would like to select this battle to be mine. You could have the next 10, 15. I don't know. I was not given a number. I would like to choose this battle. She had no idea what I was talking about. It should have been over right then and there, according to legend. Nope. Two hours later, I say sleep. She says peepers. I'm like, I'm sick of arguing about this. Let's just call somebody else. We get her friend Heather on the phone. Well, I say crusties. Crusties? Are you kidding me? It's for your nose. You got a crusty or there's a bat in the cave. We're not even talking about this. So we call my friend Dave. I say eye boogers. I'm a grown man. I'm not going to call him eye boogers. Why didn't I just shut up? Why didn't I just, if I just shut up, I'd be sitting on the couch all by myself playing Call of Duty in a much better mood. What's that, Peeper? Oh, I must have missed that this morning. Whatever. But you know what we call it? Peepers. You're right. We call it Peepers. So what was all, any of it for? I have no idea. You learn things when you get married. You know, your life goes into a fast forward when you get married. It's like, as soon as you get married, then it's like, you, next thing you hear is, what, what about a grandkid? When are you gonna get us a grandkid? I'm like, take it easy, all right? We've been married four weeks. I think you can wait six months to meet your grandkid. Um, but, uh, you know, and then they get all excited, but they don't understand sarcasm. I learned where grandparents' names come from, finally. You know, you never meet grandma and grandpa. It's always me, ma, pee, pap. Me knew. And I always wanted to make fun of that guy, but I can't. He didn't choose to be called that. No one would. It's not up to him. You know what it's up to? The first grandkid. Everything's up to them. If they can't say grandpa, whatever comes out instead, that's what sticks. Hey, say grandpa. Ship top. Uh, no. No, please, no. I've waited my whole life for someone to call me grandpa. Ship top. Ship top. He already knows. He knows that for the rest of his days on this earth, he's going to sign every birthday and Christmas card. Love, ship top. And mud hut. Mamma mud hut. Just because this one's too stupid to say grandpa right. It's stu this stuff keeps me up at night. My wife, my wife, uh, you know, thinking I'm funny, like that was a huge part of, of me ending up with her because I had had so many issues trying to find a woman that I felt really appreciated my sense of humor. Because you, when you hear growing up, you know, women love a guy with a good sense of humor. Is that true, ladies? Like, is that attractive if a guy can make you laugh? <laughs> hear that, fellas? Do you hear that? that that's what a lie sounds like. Okay, so just, so just know it. I just helped you out right there. If you're looking for a tell, I just gave you one. They think they mean it. They don't. When I was in college, I used to get Maxim Magazine, okay? And every, every time I'd get it, I'd flip to the middle, and they'd have some beautiful celebrity laying there, and they'd be like, Scarlett Johansson, what do you look for in a guy? And she'd be like, he could be fat and stupid and poor. As long as he makes me laugh, <laughs> just stop it, okay? <laughs> like being funny never helped me get the first date, you know? Like anytime I ever tried to use my sense of humor to impress a girl, it backfired. January of 2005. I will never forget this day <laughs> for as long as I live. I'm walking through a mall, very attractive woman in front of Victoria's Secret stops me when I'm walking by. She's like, excuse me, sir, hi. Are you shopping for a wife or a girlfriend today? 
And I was like, no, why? And she goes, we're having an after Christmas sale and all our bras are 50% off. So I say, I like when your bras are 100% off, right? I mean, that quick, man, I'm not gonna, I was as proud as I've ever been in my life. Not because it's that funny, but the timing was impeccable. And, and she didn't get it. She didn't get it. She's like, 100%. then they'd be free. Well, that's one way of putting it. Uh, you know what, you're right. At that point, they would, in fact, be free. Which is back-to-back -back jacks where I come from. But that just got her even more confused. She's like, okay, hang on a second. Stephanie? Steph? I'm sorry, I'm just gonna run this by my manager. Like, I just started last week. Maybe there's a deal they haven't told me about where you, where you get one. She's, she's coming. Okay, this is my manager, Stephanie. Hi, um, Steph, this gentleman said that he thinks our bras should be a hundred percent off, does that? And the other girl was like, <laughs> did he say that? <laughs> Sir. <laughs> this is my new employee, you don't mess with her. <laughs> then we wouldn't make any money. And I was like, well, I think you're wrong there, too. But listen, I digress. I... <laughs> There's a moral to that story. It's very subtle. I don't know if you picked it up. But sometimes you got to do it for the story, OK? Yeah. If I was really trying to get a date out of that, maybe I would have played my cards a little better. But I said what I wanted to say. And at the very worst, I had an awesome story to tell you about. It. And that's what I say to everybody. Do what makes a better story for you, all right? There'll be times in life where I'm like, I shouldn't do this. But I know 250 people in Sarasota that might want to hear about it if I do. And I do it for you, OK? Yeah. Many years ago, I farted on Jessica Simpson. <laughs> now, to some of you, apparently, that's a complete story. There's a lot more to it, OK? I don't just go around crop dusting celebrities. <laughs> she earned it. Here's what happened. I was living in Los Angeles, and I was flying home to Cincinnati for Thanksgiving. It was a red-eye flight, left LA at 1 AM, stopped in Texas. Then that same plane continued on to Cincinnati. Now the airport is dead this time of night. I'm not really paying attention to anybody. And I give the lady my ticket and I start to walk down onto the plane. The jet bridge is backed up and I notice the girl standing directly in front of me is Jessica Simpson. Now at that time, she was married to Nick Lachey, who is also from Cincinnati. At the time, he was always seen around town at sporting events and nightclubs. His whole family still lived there. It's Thanksgiving. I thought, that's probably where she's headed to. So just making conversation, I go, you going to Cincinnati? And she was like, are you, are you talking to me? No. Why would I go to Cincinnati? <laughs> and in my head, I was like, well, aside from the list of reasons that I just came up with, is that a crazy question to ask anyone getting on a plane that's going to end up in Cincinnati? <laughs> but I kept my cool. I was like, oh, I'm, I'm sorry. I wasn't trying to pry. I just thought maybe you're going to visit your husband or his family for the holidays. I said, I'm, I'm a stand-up comedian. I've actually met him a few times. He's always been a really cool guy. And she goes, I'm sure you've met my husband. And I was like, no, you did. <laughs> I was upset, OK? Because I, nor anyone, ever deserves to be treated that way. I don't care who you are or how many times I've downloaded pictures of you and then Photoshopped myself into them. That's not the <laughs> point right now. And I would have been able to get over it if I was sitting anywhere else on that plane. But she's in the last row of first class, and I'm one row back in coach across the aisle. So every time I glance up, I see her in her big comfy chair getting whatever she wants brought to her the second she asked for it. And I just, every time I looked at her, I got mad again. 
And I thought about my friends back in Ohio. The whole time I lived in Hollywood, the only thing they ever asked me was, have you met anybody famous yet? Now I finally had. What was I gonna say? Yeah, she's not very nice. That's a boring story. So. We land in Texas. I'm wide awake in the middle of the night, and I decide, you know what, I'm gonna just get off the plane, I'm gonna get some food, and then I'm gonna get back on before it takes off. So I step out into the aisle, she's just waking up, and by the time she gets her stuff together, she ends up directly behind me while we're waiting for the front door to open when I felt it. <laughs> and it wasn't like, my stomach hurts. It was, this is God letting me get my revenge for the way that I was treated a couple hours ago. Right? And even then, I was like, I shouldn't do it. You know, if it makes a sound, everybody's gonna know it was me. Plus, the power of the plane had been turned off, so the air wasn't circulating anymore. So there were gonna be a lot of civilian casualties. You know what I'm saying? Some serious collateral damage. But it's all I could think to do. I knew at that moment it was gonna be that story or no story. So I throw it out there, and it's awful. Okay? It's, it was unacceptable. There were people turning around like they might be able to spot it in the air. They were just like. <laughs> and I wanted to turn around to see if she was making a face, but I knew I couldn't do it without laughing. So I'm like, the door's still closed up here. I was like, keep it together. We're gonna be out of here in just a minute. The war is over, clearly I'm the victor. All right, so we finally get out into the terminal and I get this feeling. It's a feeling that comedians have when they think something's funny. It doesn't count until someone who's not a comedian says, yeah, that's good. So I call my best friend back in Ohio where it's 4.30 a.m. He's like, hello. I was like, look, man, I'm not trying to scare you. I still need to be picked up in a couple hours. I just let, I had to let somebody know that about 10 minutes ago, I farted on Jessica Simpson. <laughs> And from a sound sleep, he says, that's awesome. And I was like, thank you. Thank you for saying that. You know, because if he liked it at 4.30, he was going to love it at noon. So thank you guys for coming out tonight. I appreciate you being here. Have a good night.